Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. What a blessing and what a privilege it is to be able to come into your hearts and come into your homes uh, this morning. Amen. God is awesome and he is amazing. Amen. Good morning, my St. Paul family. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. God is simply amazing. We want to praise his name on this blessed Lord's Day. Good morning, Gisela. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Tanzala. First family, everybody is speaking to you. Pastor Rosemary and family, good morning. Good morning, Mother. Deidre, good morning. Rhonda Brooks, good morning. Hey, Christy. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Amen. What a joy it is. Hopefully you guys are doing great. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and give God some praise this morning. Give him some hearts. Amen. Tell him thank you this morning. Amen. Amen. Sister Grayson. <laughs> Amen. We definitely miss you guys too. Amen. Deidre. Amen. We definitely miss you guys too. Aretha, good morning. Brother Brian Williams, good morning, brother. Amen, amen. Yeah, give him some praise this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning, Regina. Sister Lucy, good morning. Let me make sure my volume is up. All right, thank you for sharing. Good morning, Roderick, Minnie Murdoch, good morning, Dorothy Ferguson, Linda Stevenson, Sharonda Giles. Yeah, good morning, everybody speaking to the family. Regina speaking. Hey, cousin Katrina and family. Good morning, Tanya Fuller and family. Sister Sheila, Brother Charles and family. Amen, amen, hallelujah. God is great and greatly to be praised. Good morning. Heard it saying, Kelly, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Been missing you guys, too. Been missing you guys, too, since I heard it saying. Amen. Good morning, my sister D, Deacon Smith. Good morning, sir. Yolanda. Good morning, cuz. Jocelyn. Good morning. Lazare. James Martin, J.A. and Justice. Good morning, Martin family. Good morning. Hello, Janetta. Good morning, Father Tankson, Father Tankson, good morning. Hello, Lisa, Kalise, and CJ, good morning. Amen. Cedric Thompson, Brother Charles, Shanabu, good morning, everybody coming in. Amen. Tashana, good morning. Brother Chris Caston and LaVon and family, good morning, guys. Annie Redman. What's up, Mel and family? Dorothy Swint, good morning. Louisa Boyd, good morning. Lisa is speaking to everybody. <laughs> Hopefully everybody's doing good this morning. I'm telling you, I'm blessed. We're all blessed. <laughs> Melon says she miss us. Miss you guys. Hello, Shirley Carr. Linda Bowden. All right, guys, we get ready to we get ready to crank it up here. Pastor Cunningham Sr., good morning, Father. Jennifer Jackson, Emma, good morning. Good morning. Go ahead and share it if you haven't done so. We're gonna have our moment where, of course, we're gonna get an opportunity to share it. Elaine Davis, good morning. Brother Fuller, good morning, sir. Amen. Minister Betty Newell, good morning. Amen. The devotions are coming back. Amen. The devotions are coming back. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Dawn. What's up, Sora? Good morning. All right. We're going to go ahead and get it kicked off, guys, with some prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this awesome day, this awesome opportunity, this awesome privilege just to be in your presence. 
And we're praying right now that you continue to uh, open up your um, your wealth of blessings upon us this morning. You allowed us, Lord God, to wake up and see a brand new day. And for that, Lord, we give you praise. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it, oh God. We thank you today, Lord God, for just giving us the strength, giving us the fortitude, the will and the stamina, Lord God, to say thank you. And God, we definitely thank you, Lord God. We are people of God that are appreciative. We are people of God that is unashamed to tell you how much we thank you, Lord. And we pray right now that you just go before this day, go before our service, Lord God. And, and I pray something is said, something is experienced like never before that will transform, revolutionize the lives of your people, whereby we're able, Lord God, to be able to stand firm in these arduous and perilous times. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you right now. We love you. We honor you in Jesus' precious name. Everybody to give God a praise right there and say amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. Come on, family. Come on, family. Let us get up and praise and worship a God that is alive and is well. Amen. All right, guys. We're getting ready to open up here and we just thank our God on this blessed Lord's Day. We're here to give him some praise. Come on, put your holy hands together wherever you are. Just give God some praise there. Come on, put your hands together wherever you are. If you're walking, if you're running, if you're just waking up, hopefully you've been up. But we're here to praise the God that is alive and well. Come on, family, let's praise him. Oh, oh, oh. oh thanks come on. Unto the Lord, let's bless him today. Come on, come on. Oh, give oh, thanks. Give thanks come on, come on. To the Lord. To the Lord. Oh, he is good. He's so he good. Is good. Oh, give oh, thanks. Give God, he's so good for he is worthy, so worthy, yeah, so good, oh, for he is worthy, so worthy, come on, come on, so good, come on, come on, come on, come on, let's bless him, to our God, so good. Get up. Come on. Oh, Come on, bless our God. Oh, Lord, hey. he is good. Come on, bless him. He is good. Oh, 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 give thanks, thanks yeah. Oh, to the Lord. To our God. Oh, for he is worthy. So worthy. Anybody know God is worthy out there? He's so good. Come on. Oh, for he is worthy. right there somebody come on give God your best praise right there he's so worthy 
from the rising of the sun until that same sun sets, our God is worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh hallelujah. Every day, my God is good. So good. Hey. Come on, bless him. Come on. Every day is good. So good. Every morning, my God is good. Every day, my God is good. In the evening, my God is good. Yes, he is. Oh, so good. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. Hey. Oh, come on, give God praise right there. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, give God praise right there. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He is so worthy to be praised. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning for those that I haven't got a chance to speak to. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Cherise. Amen. Amen. Era, good morning. Go ahead and share it, somebody. I know that you guys have already been sharing. Go ahead and share it if you have not shared it. Man, this is your opportunity to expand the kingdom of God. Amen. This is our blessed privilege to be able to share with those um, that don't know the Lord in the pardon of their sins. Amen. We have a word for you this morning. Amen. We've got a wonderful worship service for you. And I pray that you're blessed today, that the foundation of your life will be shook in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He is so worthy. What's up, Raheem? Amen. What's going on? Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Definitely, definitely want to just give God a good shout out this morning. So go ahead and share it right now, wherever you are. Good morning, Doris. Good morning, Mildred Cash. Cash family, one to more. Amen. 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 Vera Lane. Amen. Betty, oh yes, we definitely have some energy this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. How we bless the Lord. All right. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. May God bless you immensely. Amen. For sharing it on your personal page. I know that that page is very, very personal to you. And you don't want to just put anything on your page. So I get it. Amen. But both of you that are finding benefit in the ministry, may God richly, richly bless you. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Just want to give everybody a good, warm welcome once again. Welcome out um, as we represent our church family, the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Woo -woo. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, absolutely love our church family. We cannot wait until we can settle some things down to get back um, so that the body of Christ can get back together again. But we're still going to take our time. Can I get a witness right there? We're going to take our time. We're not going to rush. We're not going to rush into it. We're still being prayerful. Um, we're still being strategic. Um, because we know that the pandemic is still real and it's still out there. Amen. And we know that many people are still getting affected. Um, so definitely we want to be um, be very, very wise in this moment. Amen. So um, as we continue to navigate through these waters, I want to ask that you continue to pray for us as leaders and pastors and teachers and, and those of us that are on the forefront so that we can make sure that we are doing the right thing for the body of Christ. Amen. 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 So again, welcome. Our mission here is to engage Christians in a family-centered atmosphere and to provide a community-focused outreach with a desire to heal the hurting and to provide relief to those that are suffering. Yes. Encourage Christians to live a lifestyle of praise and worship and to honor and give reverence to our almighty God. To empower Christians through the word of God to live holy, healthy, and spirit-filled lives yes, to the glory of God. To equip Christians with the tools needed to evangelize, witness, and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Of course, you all know what our theme is. I hope that you all have grasped on to our theme of going higher. Amen. Higher in our devotion, higher in our praise, higher in our commitment to God, and higher and even in our um, personal fitness to God. Amen. We're going higher. Amen. And we're so grateful for what God is doing and for how he's doing it, even in the midst of drama, chaos, mayhem, and all of the other things that are popping off in our lives. We're still going to go higher. Can I get a few witnesses that are, that are going to go higher with us in the Lord? Amen. We're going higher in the Lord. Amen. And make sure that you connect with our audio call. For those of you that have been connecting with us over the last couple of months, um, you all know on Wednesday, I believe that there's just a flood of people, Bible studies and everything going on on Facebook and, and on the audio call. So make sure you get on the audio call because we've been having some complications with going on Facebook Live. Um, so make sure 
Make sure that you get that number, go back in the feed and get that number in the event that we have complications on um, on our Facebook page. That way you, you will be able to at least hear us audibly on our, um, on our audio call. And then you'll be able to see me uh, go live. So in the case that you can't hear me. Hey Amen. So make sure you get that number. That's on Wednesdays. And I'm certainly excited about what God is doing. Uh, also on Mondays, make sure, look, make sure that you connect with Pastor Rose, Mary. Hey Amen. She is doing a fantastic job uh, being able to reach back into the community and grab on to other prayer warriors. Hey Amen. We had um, um, we have another uh, pastor that connected with us and he prayed over the men. What a joy it was to just be able to partner uh, with all of those in our community. So for sure, make sure you dial in. Um, send your prayer requests to rwims at scpmbc.org. Hey Amen. We would definitely pray over you. And we have been seeing God do some uh, some crazy things in, in our prayer. Hey Amen. He's been answering some prayers and I've been getting emails, hey Amen, from from different ones, people I have not even met yet. I'm getting different emails about, Pastor, thank you so much for, for you and your family and your church family praying um, for, for my friend, praying for my classmate, getting ready to go into a ventilator, but then all of a sudden, God, turn that thing around. Amen. Prayer still Amen. works. Amen. Amen. Prayer still works. So definitely make sure that you connect with us on Monday. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. But look, guess, guess what? We are going back live starting this Monday, uh, going back live at 6 o'clock a.m. We did have a, a complication last week with my job, going back to my job. They scheduled me at 6 o'clock, come in for a meeting. So I, I ask that you guys will be flexible during this time. Sometimes they may call me in, sometimes they're not. But we're still going to be as consistent as we possibly can be um, during this particular time. I know how the enemy works. We know how the enemy works. I mean, he does not want the word to go forth. And I believe that many people are being blessed uh, by the morning devotion. So tomorrow morning, we are back at six o'clock a.m. So set your clocks, set your clocks. And if we have any altercations or if we have any um, amendments to it, we will certainly give you a guy's heads up. Amen. But, but for sure, tomorrow morning, we're going to go back live at six o'clock a.m. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. Looking forward to that. And I'm excited about our get up, get out, get active movement, guys. I'm really, really excited um, for those of you that have connected to the app. Um, look, some of them have already, Brother Brian, have already reached his mark um, as, it relates to, um, as it relates to his miles. He's over the 75-mile mark. Brother Brian, how many miles have you done? How many miles have you done so far? Amen. So those of you that are doing your bikes, those of you that are getting up walking, running, jogging, jumping jacks, whatever the case may be, jumping rope, it all counts. It all counts because you're getting up, you're getting out, and you're getting active. That's all that matters at the end of the day. So I'm so proud, so, so proud. There are people that are really, really tackling head on. And, the, and I believe we have almost right at 30 people that are connected to the app. So it's not too late, guys. It is not too late. Come on, get in, join in. I got up this morning and did roughly about eight miles or so. First lady did, I think, three or so, mile, three miles or so. And many others that are on it. Look, come on, join in with us. It is, it is good for your heart. It is good for your heart and I pray that God will bless you guys immensely even if you don't connect to the app look go ahead and hashtag when you do when you do anything just hashtag G-U-G-O-G-A and post your picture on there so we can see what you're doing it excites me and my niece uh, my, my, uh, my sister's daughter Called me this morning. She said, "Look, Uncle Thurman, I'm just so I'm just so excited this morning. I'm out walking right now. I did two miles, and I'm just so excited that you guys are motivating me. And I'm just excited about that. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. So, look, I'm excited about it. I'm praising God for you that are uh, that are getting up, getting out, and getting active. Amen. And for sure, that seventy five gift card, seventy five dollar gift card, will be somebody's there in St. Paul. So, come on, join us. Amen. Awesome." All right, look, we're getting ready to get back into our worship, and then we're going to have the word right after this song. Amen? Amen. This song is entitled Speechless. Amen. Speechless. And look, the family and I, we praise God for um, just being able to be a, a family that comes into your hearts and comes into your homes. Whatever you got going on, understand that worship is your weapon. Amen. Amen. Worship is your weapon. So let's praise and worship our God right here. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. How many know God is worthy? How many know that God is worthy? He is worthy. Whoa. I just somebody wherever you are, just shout. Whoa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unending. Always on time. 
unfeeling, but never unkind, unmerited, favor is mine, Take 
my breath away. You take my breath away, God. Come on, everybody, give God a big O right here. Come on, say it. right there. Hey, man, family, y'all bless my heart this morning. Come on, give God praise for the first family this morning. Amen. Ushering in the presence of Almighty God. Oh, how we bless the Lord. Oh, how we bless him today. Oh, God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity once again, Lord God, just to be able to come into your presence. And I'm praying, Lord God, that the hearts of your people now have been tilled, ready to receive this word in the mighty, awesome, matchless name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that hearts will be transformed, that lives will be changed, yes, that some will come running saying, that's me. I'm ready to give my life over to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for just allowing us once again. Amen. amen to come into your hearts. I do have this word for you coming from Mark, the ninth chapter, verses 14 through 29. Yes, amen. Mark, the uh, ninth chapter, verses 14 through 29 in the NLT version, of course, my version of choice. And it reads like this. When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them and some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe, and they ran to greet him. What is all this arguing about? Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, teacher, I brought my son to you so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever he, whenever this spirit seizes him and throws him violently to the ground, then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth, becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Mm. Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion. And he fell to the ground, uh, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. The spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean, if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe. But help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers were growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak, he said. I command you to come out of this child and never enter into him again. Yes. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as the people said, he's dead. But then Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet, and he stood up. Yes. And afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with the disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Jesus replied, this kind. Hmm. Oh, my God. This kind yes, Lord. can be cast out only by prayer and fasting. Afterward, when Jesus was alone, in the house with the disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we do it? This kind can only be cast out by prayer. And one of the virgins says, and fasting. All right, I want to get right. in. I want to get into this. Let I want to get into this. I want to just simply talk for just a few moments of your time. Don't get out of your way. It's time to come out. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Somebody need to shout right there. It's, it's time, time to come out. To come out. Come out, come out, wherever you are. It's time to come out. Amen, amen. Against the backdrop of this story is a very familiar scene where Jesus has taken the inner circle of his disciples up to the mountain in what we now uh, has been termed by theological scholars um, as the Mount of Transfiguration. Because in a real sense, Jesus is transfigured before their very eyes. Yes, it is at that point on the mountain where the PA system of heaven is cut on. Mm -hmm. 
the windows of heaven opens and God gets on the boom box of eternity and says, as it is reported in verse seven, this is my beloved son. Go back up in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Here is this scene with Moses and Elijah, two of the major players in the Old Testament, uh, who are both major prophetic liberators of the Old Testament. And they are on this point. Here they are at this point on the Mount of Trans Transfiguration. And they say to Jesus, let's just chill up here. Mm. Let's not go anywhere at all. Let's just stay right here where we are. But well, watch this. I want to go ahead and just deep dive into this. The problem with staying right where they are is that if they stay uh, where they are, they can't fulfill who they are. All right, all right. I want you to get this this morning. He is called Jesus to be the savior of the world. They, the disciples, are called to be the followers of the most high God himself. The danger of getting caught up and enamored in transfigured moments is that you want to stay and remain in a place that was only designed to get you prepared. Yeah. Can I talk to somebody? It, it is a simple and important memo this morning. Never allow yourself to become emotionally enamored with that which is designed, designed to be a temporary place. Mm. Can I preach to you, Sarah Regina, right, this morning? Right. Can I preach to you, Shirley Carr and Deidre? One of the dangers of always being in constant uh, desires of staying in high moments of celebration is that if you stay on the mountain, you will miss and bypass your purpose in the valley. All right. And so when they come back down, yeah, they encounter uh, this demonic boy. Uh huh. And one of the things that you must understand that the text makes very clear to us is that while they are on the mountain of transfiguration, that there was something going on in the valley. And, and that oftentimes, First Lady, while you are having your mountaintop experiences, the devil is already busy in the valley orchestrating and devising your, your next destructive moment to meet you at your point where you come off your high and come off your high worship. And that's the word for somebody that is listening today because somebody can testify that you are in your mountain right now, that you are on your mountain right now. But in about an hour or so from now, you're going to have to leave the mountain and go back to the same stuff that the devil is already preparing for you to fight right after your moments of celebration and right after your communion with Almighty God. Mm. And when they come back down, there is an interesting twist in the story that is bypassed and is often overlooked in the reporting of this story. This boy is brought by his father. Mm. Yeah. And I want you to hear the words of the father here in verse 17. The father says that he has a dumb spirit in the King James. He has a dumb spirit. It is a word in the Greek that says uh, that that is pronounced Eloas. Yeah, Eloas means dumb spirit, and it means that he is mute. That means that he cannot talk. And, and, but it is Matthew who gives a stronger connotation in Matthew chapter 17, verse 15, and that is a report that he comes to Jesus and he says to him, Master, my son is a lunatic. Mm, stay with me here. It, it is the word, this word lunatic in the Greek, it is pronounced selonidosom. Let me say it again. Selonidosom is the word in the Greek and it means to be moonstruck and it means to be crazy. It means to be buff wild. It means to be foolish. It means to be outlandish and fanatical and wild and ferocious and extreme. Yeah, that word, that word lunatic, y'all stay with me here. Can I teach for just a few moments? Interestingly, uh, one version goes so far as to say that he is an epileptic, uh, but he describes his son as a lunatic who possesses a dumb spirit, who is mute. And watch what he says in verse 18, that whenever it seizes him, 
Y'all stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Whenever this dumb spirit, whenever uh, this thing jumps on him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth. He gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid and stiff. Oh, I'm getting ready to come into your house this morning. And in verse 22, he says that his sons keep falling. Look at my screen. In and out of fire and water. Come on, somebody. Yeah, in and out of stuff. I hear Alicia Keys. I keep on falling. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. I know everybody ought to know that song. In and out of love with you. Oh, yeah. Look, y'all. Look, y'all. Let me move on. He keeps on falling. (laughs) In and out of the same old stuff. Yeah. He keeps doing the same old thing. And ending up in the same, can I preach to somebody, the same old places. He keeps falling in the same miserable cycle and he's a lunatic. Oh my God, he's buck wild. Oh, help me Lord. He's foolish, he's outlandish, he's fanatical, he's wild, he's ferocious, and he's extreme. Can I preach to somebody this morning? Yeah, he, he's somebody who, who, who doesn't appear to be learning from his mistakes. Because it keeps falling back into the same stuff over and over again is what I'm trying to tell you. And I know and I know right now I'm making somebody uneasy and maybe I'm making somebody mad because you think I'm calling you a lunatic. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. But I, but I can use the text here. Can I not use the word of the Lord? Yeah. The text suggests that anybody, anybody who keeps falling into the same mess, the same activity, the same depression, the same dysfunction, the same types of relationship to the extent that you've been falling into bad stuff so long that good stuff seems dysfunctional, you are in a lunatic mindset. Watch this. Get this. Get this. I got hope. Hey, Amen. Get this. Watch this. Uh, you've grown. There's some people that are grown accustomed to falling into the wrong thing. That when the right thing comes along, it looks abnormal. Some of you all have bypassed 10 husbands and 10 wives because you've been trying to find the right one. Mm. Watch this. The first one, the first man, eh, should have taught you a lesson. I'm preaching better than you saying amen. I'm getting ready to hit you in the gut, but I got hope. Eh, Get accustomed to falling to the stuff, wrong stuff, and now it's abnormal. The first woman should have taught you a lesson. But there you go again, falling back into the same cycle. You move from job to job and nothing has changed. You move from city to city, but nothing has changed. You move from job to job, did I just say that? But nothing has changed. You move from man to man, but nothing has changed. You move from woman to woman, but nothing has changed. You move from men to women and men to women, but nothing still has changed. Reverend, Reverend, well, let me tell you this. Reverend, Pastor, Thurman, whatever you call yourself, all men are dogs. Maybe all men aren't dogs. Maybe you just... Uh, Learn how to be the best dog catcher in town. (laughs) Falling back. Why are y'all laughing? Falling back into the same old stuff. The same spending habits. uh, The same job habits. The same kind of friendships. The same kind of boyfriends. Uh, You left one thug and went to another one. Brother, you left one gold digger and went and found another one. And you keep going through the same stuff over and over again. And you keep trying to figure out what in the world is going on with me. Why can't I change? Why can't I get better? Why can't I make the best decision? Why can't I discern the voice of the Lord? Hear the Lord clearly. Why can't things get better in my life? You keep on falling. It's because. All of us have moments where we become lunatic. Can I preach to somebody this morning? I know it's heavy. I know it's strong. But I want to tell you, we're getting ready to get up out of this stuff. We're coming up out of this stuff. Verse 18, he keeps doing stuff and falling into stuff that's killing him. And it is extreme. But here is a shout of the story. I told you I'm going to give you some shout stuff. Here's a shout of the story. Verse 22 says that he keeps going through fire and water. 
which means he's been through stuff that should have burned him, should have, should have burned him and something that could have drowned him. But what makes him, what makes this shouting material trinity is an understanding that what could have killed him becomes the ingredients that gives him strength for a greater testimony. Oh, bless the Lord. And I'm talking to somebody here today who's looking and listening and, and connected today. People think that you're shouting because of the car and shouting because of your house and shouting because of the job. No, honey. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're not shouting because of what you have. You're shouting because of what you survived. Can I get a, can I get a shout right there that there are some survivors that are connected with me this morning. I survived every abusive relationship. I survived every dysfunctional relationship. I survived backstabbing friends. I survived being fired. I survived cancer. I survived being laid off. Oh, I survived molestation. I survived divorce. And I survived that. And I will survive this. Amen. And Paul says, uh, 1 Corinthians 4, verses 8 through 11, he says, We are troubled yes. on every side, but yet not distressed. Yes, we are perplexed, but yet not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, uh, dying the, of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Somebody need to shout, I survive. I survive. <laughs> yeah, preacher, preacher, how can I stop? But then, well, then teach me, teach me. I'm, I'm connected this morning because I want to learn. I really want to learn yes. how to stop. Uh, living like a lunatic. I want to learn. I want to learn how to live in, how to stop living extreme. I want to learn how to stop living like this. Lord, help me. Somebody shout, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Well, the first thing that the text is tailored to teach us is that you need somebody in your life who knows when helping you is beyond them. Hmm. You need to understand that, Gisela, and Nashe, and Anitris, and Jocelyn, and Sharice. You need to understand that. You need to understand that you need somebody in your life to help you understand that when they cannot give you any more assistance, it's time to move on to the next person that can. Mm. Watch the text. Watch the text. The text says that the father's been with the disciples uh, uh, when Jesus is not there. Mm. Okay. N now, you have to remember that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, Mark being written first, you got to understand that the that these are the writers, the gospels of the first century Christian. These are the disciples. Uh, they write their gospels to the first century Christian culture, not just to tell the story of Jesus Christ, but they are using the story of Jesus Christ to prove particular points to the first century church and to make points uh, to the uh, to the Judas uh, to the to the Jews culture of that day and the religious um, of their Judaism. So that when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, it is not just a chronicle of Jesus Christ, but it is also a message to the church. Mm -hmm. Somebody say church. church to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, when you understand that, when you understand that, you will understand uh, also that the disciples here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and these disciples represent the church. Because right. they're the first ones on the scene. They represent the church. Now that we've uh, been schooled, let me unpack this thing for you. All right. uh, that the man brings his son to the disciples. Oh, watch this. The man brings his sons mm. to the church. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the disciples. They bring their son to the church. Yeah. And when Jesus come back from the mountain, the father tells Jesus, I brought my son to the church. And the church could not help me. Oh, my God. What a sad, terrible plight that is. That you bring people to the house of the Lord and you're not getting the help. Oh, my God, that you are seeking for. You're not getting the word that you came for. You're not getting any transformation in your life. You're going wherever you're going, but you're not getting the help and the hope and the encouragement that you need. I propose that you are in the wrong spot. Watch this. He brings his son to the disciples, the church. Even when the church could not help him, he did not leave. The father did not leave. He stayed right there and waited 
Oh, bless the Lord. Because he knew that Jesus may have been on the mountain, but eventually something within him said, but he has to come back my way. Can I get a shout right there? So, so, so I'm going to, I'm going to tarry. I'm going to tarry until Jesus shows up. Somebody need to shout. Jesus is getting ready to show up. He is showing up. The text says in Matthew, when he comes to Jesus, that he kneels down. Can I go ahead and exegete this? That he kneels down. It is the Greek word kneel. It is a Greek word that is pronounced gunapetio. Yeah, the Greek word gunapetio, kneel down. From where we get our English word prostrate, a uh, face on the ground. In the biblical connotation, prostrate means he worships. Mm, can I talk right there? So that he gets in worship posture and he says, Lord, which means he is in worship demeanor. I want you to get the picture. Can I teach? Okay. I want you to get the picture worshiping before he gets anything. Mm. Worshiping before he asks Trinity uh, for anything. Uh, worshiping for, before he knows what the Lord is going to do. He is worshiping. Oh, bless the Lord. He is worshiping. Worshiping before he gets anything. Worshiping not knowing what he is going to get. He is worshiping. But here is the trip. And here is the twist. He's worshiping to set up a miracle for his son. He is worshiping to set up a miracle for his boy. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you know, uh, watch this, Nashe. You, you, you know, you know that you are growing in, into maturity when you can go to God and it's not about you, Shirley Carr. You can go to God and it's not about you, Georgia Grayson and Regina. Mm -hmm. You can go to God, the nine of you that are connected and it's, don't have anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can go to God on behalf of somebody else. Right. Oh, bless right. the Lord. You know, you know that you are the real deal and the real thing when your worship is not about you. And what you want is about is not about what you need, about what you desire and about what you're asking for. But you're worshiping to ask God to step in for somebody else. Right. Can I get a witness right there? Yeah, yeah. And, and is, is there anybody that is watching and listening today? Is there anybody listening today who can testify, preacher, I've learned how to go to God for other folk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, you ought to go ahead and bump the screen, bump the neighbor on the screen and tell your neighbor, amen, that God is getting ready to show up in your life. Oh, bless the Lord. Go ahead and bless somebody else. God is getting ready to show up in your life. And go ahead and put their name, all the names that you see. God is getting ready to show up in your life. And Shay and, and Mildred Cash and Dorothy and Swint and Margaret Steele and Brother Charles and Pastor Rosemary. God is getting ready to show up in your life, in your house. He's getting ready to turn some things around. And somebody needs to shout, it's time to come out. Oh, bless the Lord. And God is looking for somebody. He's looking for somebody who is willing to join in partnership with that neighbor and declare, I'm about to shout for your breakthrough. I'm about to shout for your healing. I'm about to shout for your marriage reconciliation. I'm about to shout for your child coming back home. I'm about to shout for your job calling you back on tomorrow. I'm about to shout for your wife getting it straight. I'm about to shout for your husband getting his mind right. I'm about to shout, don't you move anywhere. Amen, you sit right there and give God some praise for somebody else. Oh, bless the Lord. Our praise and our worship ought not be selfish. It ought not be self-centered. It ought not be self-seeking. It ought not be me-focused. You need some worshipers in your circle. Yes, Lord. But watch the text. I'm going to get on out of the way. He, he's setting his son up for, amen, systemic miracles. He's setting his son up for some blessings. But you must understand the culture because in that day and time, children live with you. Um, they helped you to become, they, they were your financial assistants, uh, and, and, and they helped you as you got older. So that if his son, watch this, watch this. So if his son doesn't get a blessing, mm. he doesn't get one either. Mm. Yeah. That was the culture back in the day, Trinity and Taylor. That was the culture back in the day because if, if his son doesn't get well, then he doesn't get financially blessed. Mm. Yeah, but if he prays for his son, whoo. 
If he prays for his wife, oh, hallelujah. If he prays for his husband or her husband, if he prays for that child to come back home, if he prays for her manager, if he prays for the president, oh, I know I'm stepping on some toes. If he prays, God by default got to open up the supernatural doors and open it up and bless you. But you got to pray for somebody else. Yeah, somebody need to shout, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive. I'm coming out of this thing. I've been in this thing too long. I'm coming out of this thing. I, I'm tired of being frustrated and aggravated. I'm coming out of this thing. I'm tired of having anxiety and depression and hypertension. I'm coming out of this thing. While you're going to God for somebody else's healing, God's got a way of healing somebody in your own family. All right. All right. So watch this. Watch what he does. Watch what he does. He worships. This father worships. Then he says, watch this. Jesus, I need your help. Mm, thank <laughs> Lord. Because, but because my, my son... Is, is, is in a condition that I can't do anything about. Oh, my Lord, I'm preaching to somebody. Yes. Lord, help them this morning. Lord, help them. Oh, let me say it again. Jesus, 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 Master, Savior of the world, I, I need your help. Yes. Because my son, whoo, my wife, mm -hmm, yes. my daughter, mm -hmm, my counterpart, my uncle, my aunt, yeah, is in a condition that I can't do anything about. Oh, bless the Lord. Watch this. Get this. Get this. He, he knew what he could do. <laughs> but he knew what was beyond him to do. Oh, bless the Lord. And then you need people, you need people in your life that know when helping you is beyond them. Let me tell you why this is a major word for somebody this morning. Because you have some people that are so dysfunctional that they need to always play the hero. And as a matter of fact, I know some people who are so sick that they uh, will intentionally Mm -hmm, I'm saying it. Be destructive so that they can set up uh, being the deliverer in your life. I'm teaching. I, I know some people, uh, they, they will mess up everything mm, so that they can show up at the right time. Oh, jump in and save the day and collect the credit. Oh, bless the Lord. Shout right there. Everybody is not mature enough to know when to let, let stuff go and let somebody else help you. Oh, I feel it right there. Everybody is not comfortable enough to say, I can't help you with this, but I know somebody who can. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord. Get this. You need people in your life that love you enough to let go and let God. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you need people who are mature enough to still want you to be delivered, but know that when they are in a position that is beyond them, uh, they take their hands off and deliver you to somebody else. Somebody shout that in Newell. If you don't shout, I'm going to shout for you. Watch this. And, and some of you have a, you have dysfunctional associations around you mm. Mm. Who, who, who try all they can to be the hero in your life. Mm. Oh, bless the Lord. Please know that how it is presented is not always the problem. Watch this. I'm about to break it down. I, I was watching, watch this. I was watching a, a, a show on Discovery Channel and they were reporting uh, people who would go to the ER and the medical division uh, for emergencies and physical traumas. Stay with me. And, and what I noticed about the doctors in many of the cases presented that the uh, doctor would get the evaluation from the patient and respond by saying, well, it is presenting itself like such and such. Mm. Okay. So the activity makes it appear to be a certain kind of thing. So let's say I have a bad cough. Can I break it down? And the doctor would say, well, now it's presenting itself like pneumonia. But I don't think that is actually what it really is. It's presenting itself a certain way. Get the picture here. Watch this. It's very interesting, uh, the juxtaposition, when you put them side by side of the words used to describe the condition of the son by the father and the words used by Mark to describe what Jesus does. Matthew calls the boy a lunatic. Can I stay with me here? Mark here simply says that he has a dumb spirit. Mm -hmm. Luke, who is a physician, do you know, says that the boy is epileptic. He has epilepsy. It is presenting itself uh, like it's a medical condition. It's presenting itself like it's a physical malady. But when you read the text, verse 18 does not say that Jesus, Jesus cures him of epilepsy. It says that Jesus rebuked the demon. Oh, I'm getting ready to go somewhere now. Don't you hang up on me. I'm getting ready to go somewhere now. Watch this. It presented itself. Watch this. But Jesus says it was a demon. 
I'm getting ready to go somewhere. Watch this. It presented itself as if it was a physical problem, but Jesus understands that it is not what it looks like, like the problem, but there is something deeper that needs to be confronted. Oh, we're getting ready to go somewhere. America, I'm coming to you now. I'm coming to you now, society. I'm coming to you now, president. I'm coming to you. Do you know? Mm -hmm. uh, what I love about Jesus, uh, his verses about other people, other people will deal with you and treat you based on your symptoms. But Jesus Christ steps in and get to the source of your problem and really change your issues. And I know I'm speaking to somebody today because you keep dealing with people who try to deal with how it presents itself. You have certain symptoms and nobody around you knows how to get to the root. You are mean and it presents itself like you have a bad personality or you've been hurt by so many people but there is a demon called bitterness oh my god i'm about to hit you in the gut right here it's a demon called bitterness that needs to be dealt with you are arrogant watch this and that is how it presents itself but there is a demon called insecurity that makes you act like you are better than everybody else when in reality, you don't even like or even love yourself. It presents itself like you just want to shop all the time and go to Amazon and buy it all up. When in reality, it is a demon of superficiality and insecurity that has caused you to have such a low self-esteem that you think you've got to buy name brand stuff so that you can have a name. Can I preach to you this morning and get out of your way? It presents itself like a gossiper and people think that you really like, that you really like to gossip and think that you really are just concerned about everybody to the extent to have everybody else is in your business. But it really is a demon of slander and neediness that has you needing people so much that you have to get affirmation from everybody. So you talk with them and that they will affirm you and make you the hero in your own victimized story. Can I preach to you? It's, it presents itself like a good hobby or casual friendships. But when it is anything that detaches you from God and his kingdom, it is a demon spirit of attachment, immature Christianity, and double-mindedness. And you become unstable in all of your ways to the extent everything and everybody uh, that's right is wrong. And everything that's wrong is right. And you start hanging around and attaching yourself to shallow, superficial people. And you are confused in your mind and never establish a firm foundation. Can I go a little bit further? And I'm almost out of your way. All right. The reason why some of us can't get free is because you keep dealing with how it is presented. I want to stop. I can stop shopping. I'm just going to stop shopping. But watch this. So you stop shopping for clothes. You stop shopping for men, then you start shopping for everything else because the real issue is your real insecurity. Child, I'm going to stop gossiping. I'm not going to talk about anybody else. And you, so you stop, but you still let folk call you with it because you still haven't dealt with the demon of affirmation. I love Jesus because Jesus doesn't waste time dealing with symptoms because Jesus gets right to the heart of the matter. Matthew, uh, the verse 21 says this. It is, is Jesus said, my disciples are dumb. They are around here trying to heal a physical condition when they don't realize that they have to deal with a demonic condition. Right. And one of the problems with the church today is the same problem that the disciples had. For too long, we've been trying to be cute with our words and sugarcoated. Mm -hmm. And instead of calling people what they are, we try to excuse away what they do. Mm -hmm. The devil is a liar. If you are demonic, you are simply demonic. You aren't just mean. You aren't just insecure. You aren't just a gossiper. No, you are demonic. And some stuff uh, would never get cured and some people would never be set free until you talk to the source. Mm. The text says in verse 25 that he talks to the demon. Oh, he speaks to it and exposes it. And some of you need to start talking to the demons that are real in your own life. In your own family. Yeah, we don't wanna we don't wanna fear nobody by calling them a demon. No, we're not talking to them, we're talking to the demon that's inside them. Mm. Watch this. The boy couldn't talk anyway, he was mute. Mm. Mm. So he had to talk to the thing that was talking for him. Mm. Yeah. Speak to the counselor in your life right now. 
Mm -hmm. Speak to lupus right now in your body. Speak to insecurity and debt and inferiority. Speak to it right now. What you need to realize is that if you ever start speaking over your life and speaking to some stuff in your life in the name of Jesus Christ, demons will begin to tremble. Woo! Demons will begin to be on the run. And I'm looking and watching somebody that is connected today that needs to start speaking stuff into your life and, uh, and, and tell it to get out of you. It's time to come out. Oh, somebody watch this tonight, and I'm not cussing this morning. I'm not cussing this morning, but it's time to get the hell out. Oh, bless the Lord. Mm, speak, Lord. It's time to get the hell out. Yeah, and I'm looking at somebody. you got the hell of depression and hell of insecurity and hell of debt and hell of cancer and hell of sickness. Get out of me in Jesus' name. Get the hell out. Oh, bless the Lord. You need to learn how to start looking at that stuff and speaking to it. And you don't need to just be watching me. You need to be opening up your mouth right now, wherever you are. You need to be opening up your mouth right now. As saved as, saved as you are, amen, you are not, oh, you're not there yet. As sanctified as you are, you're not there yet. Paul said, when I would do good, I end up doing demonic stuff that I don't want to do. We all have flesh and demonic wrestling on the inside of us. A part of me wants to be a Christian. Part of me wants to drop it like it hot. Part of me wants to be a deacon, but part of me wants to smoke a blunt. Part of me wants to be a missionary. Part of me wants to be a pastor Cavassier. Part of me wants to be a preacher, but part of me wants to be a pimp. Isaiah said, woe unto me. Yeah, for I'm a man of unclean lips and I live in the midst of a people of unclean lips. You've got demonic and spirit wrestling on the inside of you. Sometimes the spirit wins and sometimes the demon wins. Some days I do the right thing and some days I do the wrong thing. Some days I pray and some days I cuss and some days I keep my mouth shut and some days I gossip. Some days I praise and some days I don't say anything. But I want to get up right now and tell the demons in our lives to get the hell out. Yeah, get down in Jesus name. Shut up in Jesus name. Be under submission in Jesus' name. Get under subjection in Jesus' name. Get under the blood of Jesus Christ. Get under the authority of the Holy Spirit. I bind you, demon, in me. I kick you out. I get rid of you. You have no authority. You have no place. You have no power. You have no dominion. Get the hell out in Jesus' name. And is there anybody that is connected to me this morning that need the hell out of you? Oh, bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done right here. Watch this. My last point is this, that when the disciples asked, verse 18, 19, and 28, Jesus, why couldn't we do it? Jesus responded by saying, it is because you don't have enough faith and you don't know how to open your mouth. He says, because when you have faith, your mouth get together. Stuff will start happening. And I love what Jesus said in the same story in Matthew and Luke. He says, if you say to this mountain, get out of my way, then the mountain has to move. Watch this. The mountain is bigger than you. The mountain is stronger than you. The mountain is heavier than you. But, but with your voice, oh, bless the Lord. Uh, you tell the mountain. I, I, I don't plan to climb you. I, I don't plan to crawl you. I don't plan to go up you. But I plan to move you. Ah, and walk right where I'm supposed to be and destined to be. So my last point is this. Speak it. Because what you speak, you shall have. Change your language. Some of you need to change what you say because uh, you keep saying the wrong stuff in your life. Speak, Lord. Step, help them. Help Stephanie Brown this morning, Lord. You've got to learn how to open your mouth and speak the positive over your life. Yes, speak the positive over your marriage and your son and your daughter and your sickness and your depression. Speak it. Call those things that are not as though they already are. Speak your healing right now, diva. 
Speak prosperity back into your life, Wonder More. Speak a breakthrough right now, Tanya Fuller. Speak deliverance right now, Lazara, over your family. Speak joy right now, Tanzula, in your marriage. Speak restoration right now, Pastor Daddy, in your church. Yeah, yeah. I'm climbing up the mountain. And I'm I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, rather, I'm not climbing up that mountain. I'm not going up that mountain, mountain, but when I get to the mountain, I'm gonna speak my speak to that mountain and say, mountain, get out of my way. In the name of Jesus, you've got to move. You've got to stop me. You can't stop me. You can't hold me back. And I hear Peter, I hear Paul say, what shall I say? If God be for us, he is more than the whole world against us. That's the word of the Lord that I have for you today. Jesus Christ, he hung on the cross so that you could be free. Rose early Sunday morning so that you can have liberation. Our society... And everything that we are experiencing right now, you can be set free right now in Jesus' name. But you got to open up your mouth. You got to open up your mouth. When Jesus cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabbathani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He opened up his mouth and wondered where in the world, what in the world had happened to his father. But then he locked his head in his shoulder and said, Celesti in the Greek, which means it is finished. Oh, bless the Lord. Somebody need to shout, it's finished today. I'm getting my joy back, it's finished. Getting my peace back, it's finished. I'm getting my health back, it's finished. I'm getting the love back, it's finished. I'm getting salvation today, it's finished. And if you're here today and you heard something that really touched your heart, I'm talking about those you that have been saved, sanctified, and filled with God's precious Holy Ghost. If you've been saved and you found yourself on the fence, vacillating, mm -hmm, uh-huh, Caught between two opinions. Elijah says, if God is your God, then serve him. If God be God, then speak to all the demons in our lives. If you are connected today and you found yourself in anything that has been said by the power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to shout right now, Lord, that's me. You spoke to me. You spoke to me. Go ahead. That's me. That's me. And if perhaps you have not yet given Christ your life, if you have not given Christ your life, this is the opportunity right now. Life has been throwing you in the fire and in the water. And if you want to give Christ your life, this is your chance right now. I want you to repeat after me. Dear Lord, say it loud. I believe that you are the son of God. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I don't have it all together. I admit that I keep falling. I admit that I need a savior in my life. And I believe that you are the son of God. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. Come into my life. I confess my sins. I desire for you to be Lord and savior right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If that is your very first time confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Come on and shout. Come on and shout. Lord, that's me. Amen. Amen. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Look, we want you guys to get plugged in. If you don't have a church home, we want you to get plugged in right now. We want you to get plugged in. This is our way of getting a part of the body of Christ until we are able to get back together in the building physically. Amen. Reach out to us. Reach out to us. If, 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 if God is calling you to St. Paul, we want you to reach out to us right now. I want you to email us at info at scpnbc.org. We will get in contact with you. And you then, we will give you a call and bring you into the fold. You will hear from either me, our administrator, or one of our deacons. We want to get in contact with you. Get in your spot of obedience. Amen. 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 God bless you. And finally, our last final act of worship. Amen. You can give via Give the Fire or our Cash App. Thank you so much for your, um, for your love and your commitment during this time. Especially our St. Paul family. God bless you immensely. Amen. But those of you that are um, extended family, you want to be able to give into the part of the ministry. Definitely, this is your opportunity to do so right now. Amen. You can give right now. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this awesome experience, this wonderful worship that we've had. We bless and lift your name upon high. In Jesus' name, we bless and lift up the offering and all of those that are given to the service of the Lord. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. I pray that you receive that word. Amen. From the genuineness of my heart. And I pray that your day would be a blessed day in Jesus' name. See you guys tomorrow morning if it be the Lord's will. 6 o'clock a.m. God bless you.